Hi, thanks for checking out our video and our on our channel. What this video is going to be about is kind of an explanation of this particular unit. This is a Gallagher S200. They make a um, it's a this is a two stored jewel solar unit, 12 volt. It takes um has a couple of two or two uh, 12 volt batteries inside the unit. Pretty uh, good units. This is the first one we've ever had in for repair, and uh, the it got uh, submerged in a flood. Um, it was uh, normally this thing sit on a T post, but the guy that owned it didn't had it on the ground, and uh, a big storm come through back a few months ago, and um, and uh, just submerged it. He couldn't get out to it for probably a week before the water went down, and he got to go out there and get it, and he realized, hmm, doesn't work. So uh, sent it off here and. We got it going for them and everything. Um, technically, it was under warranty still because it's only a um, 2019 model, but warranty doesn't cover uh, water damage. Um, but but it, it is fixed and ready to go for the guy. A lot cheaper to fix the thing than it was to buy a new one. Uh, pretty good unit. Um, all the people we talk to that sell these things and um, at the farm stores and that have them, love them. Um, pretty reliable. This, like I said, this is the only time I've ever had one come in. And that's you know water hadn't submerged it probably still be running um so we're gonna get into it and talk a little bit about it so if you got one of these needs fixed well we we can work on them for you we do uh, don't do a lot of warranty gallagher repairs but we do uh, from time to time get a warranty one in so we can do warranty work on gallagher's uh, but we do a lot of non-warranty ones that are like 10 15 30 year old gallagher units that come in to us for repair but our all of our information is down in the drop down arrow uh, description tab there um, all of our information is there, but there's our website and, uh, and address and everything. Um, so if you got something, um, be happy to work on it for you. We work on all brands of these things, but we'll talk a little bit about this thing. Um, the construction of it's really, really good. I really like this. It's heavy. It's got two 12 volt batteries in it, but it's designed to sit on top of a T post. See that little hole right there? That's a 360 degree mount for a T post. So you can put your T-post in the ground whatever direction you want. doesn't matter. And this thing can sit on there any way you want it. So it's got a 360-degree mount for a T-post. So it's pretty slick. Um, and then it's got a couple different features to it. A lot of brands don't have this, but some do. You can actually check your, um, your battery, but you turn the switch to here. And if it lights up green, you know the battery's good. If it lights up red, battery's low. And straight up and down is off. And this little thing right here is your photo sensor. You've got two modes of, of operation for this unit. You've got wildlife mode and livestock mode. Um, livestock mode is where it pulses um, uh, faster in, during the day and slower at night because most times livestock goes to bed at night. It's not as active, so it pulses a little slower at night. Same kind of power output, um, just at a slower rate. So this is your... Um, um, this right here is a photo sensor, so it picks up the amount of sunlight hitting it. So when it gets pretty cloudy out or nighttime, this will slow the pulse down. If you're set on this mode right here, it will slow down at night. So it will um, um, conserve battery for you. So that way, if you don't need to be pulsing fast because you're not worried about predators or anything like that, you can put it to here. This is wildlife mode, they call it. And that means it pulses fast day and night. So if you got... Um, sheep and goats or whatever you know some kind of animal running around during the day but then you're worried, worried about wild hogs or um uh coyotes wolves foxes or something coming in messing with stuff at night you can put it to here and uh still have the same kind of power as it did during the day same power as this it's just going to be at the normal pulse at night about every second or two so and this little light there should flash green with every pulse and you should kind of hear it clicking not a really loud unit because the, the transformers are, are epoxy or full of epoxy. So they don't, um, the clicking sound coming from is, is muffled. Um, but it's got a nice bright green LED. You can see it from a pretty good distance away. Um, so this is wildlife mode and livestock mode. So it depends on your application, what your situation is, what mode would work best for you. But either way, the power output, from what I can understand, the power output's the same. It just depends on what kind of animals you're dealing with and how active they are during the day or night. Um, this light, I believe, will turn red if you get a bad short on it. So I'm going to turn it off for a second. We're going to take the knobs off here. The knobs are right on the back. they got a little engraved 
symbol there it says a fence uh, fence symbol right there from the hot you know lightning bolt and ground symbol right here and their knobs are green and red and uh, so if you drop the knobs on the ground or whatever you're like oh crap where my knobs go and which one's hot which one's ground just look at the terminals and then match them up these um um knobs are pretty slick they're pretty good quality they got stainless steel bolts on there so you don't have to worry about them rusting or arcing but we're gonna it's kind of a cumbersome thing to deal with because uh it's big you know physically it takes a quite a bit it's got a lot of weight to it but let me um i'm gonna get a uh fence tester hopefully my tester will work i've been having some trouble with this little analog gauge uh, my digital tester i use has uh, been parted out to fix somebody else's uh, help them out on some parts and this one i this tester i hooked up to too big of a jewel rated unit and um burnt up or started burning up the mechanism inside here so now on a bigger unit it will um, arc inside and won't allow the needle to move so, but if it's not too big, typically it'll work. So we're going to try it out. So you can see it clicking there, putting out about 8,000 volts, a little higher than eight. So, and lights flashing green. I'm going to get a, a load here to put across it. And uh, let's see. this is a, uh, let's see if this is heavy enough. It's a 150 ohm load. So I'm going to see what it drags it down to, and then I'll look also if the um, light turns red. Yep. With the 150 ohm load, we're sitting just a, just below 2,000 volts. Okay, but it did do what I thought it was going to do. So let me take this off. And then I'm going to show you what this does. Turn it back on the wild, or doesn't matter which mode I put it in, but we're putting turn it to wildlife mode. Put this load across it and watch that green light. So, if you get a, I think if it falls below 3000 volts or 3500 volts, that light will turn red. See, so the light turns red. So, if you walk up to it and the light shows red, that means you got a pretty good load on it. You know, grass, something's dragging it down. But as soon as you fix the problem, I mean, immediately goes back to flashing green again so it's pretty nice that it actually tells you by walking up to it if it's flashing red you know okay i've got i've got some kind of issue dragging my unit down here as soon as you pull the load away or you know clean the fence up or fix whatever shorts you got out there that's dragging it down that light will go back to flashing green again so then you know okay i'm in pretty good shape but um I, I really like these units these things um pretty well built they're not cheap you know they're not giving these things away but they are uh, really good quality um, like I said the only reason this one came in for a pair is it got submerged in a flood you know these things are pretty sealed up but they're not hundred percent but we'll pull this um, knob off here just loosen it up and there's um, that little thing came off there let me get a uh, uh, what size is that it's Allen head thing here let me see if i can find one that will fit i'll have to epoxy this uh i'll have to epoxy that back on for the guy but we'll pull this uh bolt out of there there's your two batteries or two 12 volt batteries wired in parallel and you can still see there's still some dirt down in here from when it got flooded but the batteries fit in there one way. They, if you pull the batteries out, if you put them in the other way, flip these batteries around, the lid won't close right because the wires get in, get in the way. But down inside, underneath the battery on the orange case is a plus and a minus stamped on there, so you just got to get your batteries lined up when you put it back in there. But uh, we had to replace batteries and go and get the board replaced in it on this one. But, um, yeah, it's a pretty slick unit. I like this one. And then we'll um, put this back in here. drill out and do it but um so if you so if you got one of these things um or thinking about buying one you're like no mm, oh, it's kind of an expensive unit but yeah but it's well built it's not like it's a cheap junky unit it's a uh, good quality got some nice features to it um some of the other brands that make these solar ones like this uh don't have those two different options they're usually all power you know 
fast day and night, but they don't have a battery check option on it like this one does. It doesn't tell you how it's doing based on a lot of the front. It doesn't have a photo sensor. This thing's got a lot of features and smarts built into it um, that make it uh, really well built. I believe, I have to look at the manual for it uh, to verify, but I think um, with the battery maintain circuitry software that's on these boards inside here, they are um, they kind of adapt the output on the for the amount of shock coming through or the pulse time on it as a battery gets depl deplenished. If it's um, uh, you go a number of days without much sunlight, I think this thing will run about three to four weeks on a fully charged battery before the uh, battery packs inside here before it finally shuts down. So it'll run a long time um, off off just the battery if the sun if the sun's not shining very much. So um, that's pretty pretty nice deal. Um, come with three year warranty right out of the box. Uh, like I said, water doesn't cover the warranty repairs on things, but um, does cover malfunctions and lightning. Um, but I uh, don't see, this is on the first one since they launched these things I've ever worked on, and that's because of water damage. So, hopefully you like this video. If you know somebody has got one of these and needs to be worked on, we'll work on it for you. Um, they are cheaper to fix than they are to buy new, so even though you're like, well, this thing is awful expensive and it's going to cost a bunch to ship it because it is a big, physically big unit, but still, even with shipping and parts and labor, it's still cheaper to fix this than it is to uh, buy new. But hopefully, won't have any issues with it. Keep it up off the ground and don't put it on the ground to get in a flood. It means these things are uh, made to sit on sit on T-post typically. You can put on a. Uh, you also, I think. Uh, nope, this doesn't have a mount to put it out on a like wood post, but these are designed to sit on, right on top of a T-post, and they're heavy enough, once you put it on there, you really don't have to move it, because it's a pretty heavy unit with all this electronics and the, the batteries in it and everything, but uh, hopefully you like this stuff, you know, if you got a broken unit, want something worked on, we'll work on it for you, uh, all of our information is on our website, fencerfixer.com. But until we do another video of how to work on one or how one works, we will see you later on.